aid represents a very essential national a commitment as important as any work which is being done by anyone for this country. The name Sierra Leone means Lion Mountains. They saw these meandering mountains which looked like lions, and when the thunders cracked, that was how it was named Lion Mountain, Sierra Leone. The outbreak of the Ebola virus took root in Sierra Leone in May of 2014 and spread with terrifying rapidity through the West African nation. How did this happen? How can we address some of the weaknesses in the health system, help to rebuild it, build back better, so that the next emergency would not allow the country to lose some of the gains in development? Despite this daunting challenge, the people of Sierra Leone responded with compassionate resilience. They worked tirelessly alongside international development organizations from around the world, the U.S. government, and in particular, USAID. They were able to achieve the March 17, 2016 declaration by the World Health Organization that Sierra Leone is currently Ebola-free. We're particularly proud of the work that we've done in Sierra Leone. Uh, together with the private sector as part of our deliberate approach to achieving development results and getting the best possible value for the American taxpayer who supports these programs and certainly for the impact that we intend to have for Sierra Leoneans. Ebola exposed the weaknesses in our system. It made us see within ourselves that uh, we had very, very weak health structures. Despite these weaknesses, USAID and its implementing partners have been able to begin to clear a path through this challenging situation. In order to address the fact that almost half the population of Sierra Leone is food insecure, USAID and Food for Peace, through a market-based approach, has successfully provided two million people with food assistance. And by partnering with UNICEF, has assuaged the suffering of more than 9,000 children facing acute malnutrition. A great example is the World Fish Project. Really a, a marvelous program and a great opportunity to revive a part of Sierra Leone's economy, which is aquaculture and raising fish for sale in the markets for food. Closely intertwined with the issues related to food insecurity, is the ability of the population to have access to food combined with the ability to pay for it. One of the most severe second-order impacts of this virus has been the reduction in basic healthcare services unrelated to Ebola. To combat these impacts, USAID has worked with local hospitals to enable the restoration of primary care services with the goal of covering 50% of the population. Lessons we are learned from Ebola, infrastructures we are put in place, we now have a proper ambulance service infrastructure in Severino whereby people are able to call like it happens in developed countries. But now the emphasis is being placed on training community nurses. They are there to help with uh, maternal health care, to help with uh, pediatric health care. These are all lessons learned from Ebola, which we are using to be able to develop our people. This training produces a multiplying effect as those trained form a solid foundation of qualified individuals who then support and train others. This will create a structure built by the people of Sierra Leone, which will ensure the country is better equipped to deal with future outbreaks as well as other natural disasters. The work that we have done built in and was based upon developing not only the containment of Ebola, but also building those health facilities and resilience so that whatever comes forward, the government would be much better prepared as well as the citizenry. There is no greater resource in this international effort than the people themselves. 
In an effort to take advantage of this resource, USAID created the Weld Initiative, Women Empowered for Leadership and Development. The project assists women in developing, managing, and delivering gender inclusion programming and services, as well as promoting activities that have thus far empowered 289 women to run for elected positions in the next election. The response to this crisis has also included new and innovative approaches to the challenges posed by the outbreak. The U.S. government launched an $8.9 million challenge to identify and fund innovations that could assist in overcoming some of the issues facing healthcare workers. This has produced technical innovations from Johns Hopkins University that have drastically improved healthcare worker suits. It was through one of our grand challenges that we came up with a new type of suit that really made a huge difference and was able to marshal more health workers to, because they felt much more secure. USAID very deliberately worked with the private sector to create technologies that we didn't have access to within the U.S. government. So we were able to create something wholly new. That kind of a private sector partnership is integral to our response. The U.S. government's challenge also created solutions for transporting payments to healthcare workers through digitization. I don't think we have to wait for these occurrences to happen before we realize that we are all in this little space that we call Mother Earth. I think we should have uh, some uh, realization that we are all here and we should be here for each other. We're very proud of our partnership with Sierra Leone and I want to thank both our team and the government of Sierra Leone for all the partnership work that we've done together. To be confronted with a disease that was so frightening and yet to be able to turn around, to come together, to work with the international community is incredible and I would like to applaud the partnership. Through these determined and combined efforts, Sierra Leone has not only stemmed the tide of this virus, but has also allowed the country to begin to build back towards a bright future, where the strength of the people and administrative systems will enable this beautiful country to prosper and overcome the challenges of the future.